Hello and welcome, my name is Vincent. Grab your wraithbone and let's head over to the Saimhan Craftwell to paint our first ever Eldar Fire Prism Grav Tank here at Bunker 6. <laughs> Well, this is very exciting. This is our first Eldar model that we are painting, and sadly it is a second-hand model, so there is some old primer still on here, but we're just going to cover that with some new primer and then get on with our base coats. Obviously, you can do this by hand with a paintbrush, but I have an airbrush, and so I'm just going to try and be as efficient as possible and use that instead. We're now going to move on to using Vallejo Flat Red, which is basically the equivalent of Corn Red in the Games Workshop paint range, but it's obviously a bit cheaper than using Games Workshop paints, and it does the same result. We're actually going to be covering that with a transparent layer of transparent red also by Vallejo which does a really nice job of giving a very nice sheen and deepness to the final red that we're going for. Now the initial red paint required two layers to cover up the black primer but this transparent layer only requires one thin layer. It does the job perfectly and the thinner it actually is the better the results are sometimes. Now obviously it's all down to taste and what you can see on camera compared to what you can see in real life, but I love this combination of flat red followed by a transparent red layer. It works perfectly. As you can see, it's a very rich red, very vibrant, and it's something that wouldn't be able to be achieved with just a layer of flat red or corn red on its own. Now we're going to be moving on to the shading of the model and we're going to be using Agrax Earthshade to do a majority of the shading work. We're going to be pulling the Agrax Earthshade into the usual places, the nooks and crevices such as the panel lines and what have you, but also we're going to be pulling the Agrax Earthshade into some of the deep contoured areas to emphasize the depth of the model. Make sure you don't have too much Agrax Earthshade on your brush because you don't want to create water stains or pooling. So just take your time. A couple of layers for the deep contour areas would be sufficient. And if there are any mistakes, you can always do very simple cleanup by going back in with flat red and then the transparent red layer to tidy up any areas where there could be potentially water stain marks from the Agrax Earthshade. Now, this can all be down to personal preference, but I didn't really have many reference images to go from in terms of where to put the black paint on the graph tank, so I kind of winged it in a couple of places, but the majority of the undercarriage of the model is painted black. Along with that, the vents are black, and some parts of the fire prison weaponry itself are black too. They're all going to be highlighted with lighter greys later on in the video anyway. You can choose where you want to paint the black and or the red paint, but I decided to try and get as close to the reference images that I found as possible. Now, because this is epic 40K scale, you can always reference full scale models if you're struggling to find any imagery that is exact within say white dwarf articles or what have you. So always check Google images or Pinterest if you're struggling to find reference images for the model that you want to paint. Now, if the Abaddon black that you're using is giving you tricky coverage like it was for me, mix in a bit of another black paint. For example, I use Vallejo black paint in the end, 50-50 mix with Abaddon black, and that really improved the coverage when I was working on this model. Now we're moving on to the fire prism itself. Now you can do a green fire prism, an orange fire prism, or in my case, I did a blue fire prism, and it worked perfectly. I think it complements itself quite nicely with the red. If I went with an orange or a green, then it would have been a bit tricky when it came to how I wanted to do the windshields or the cockpit windows, because I really wanted those to be green. So we've got a good balance of colors here. We've got some reds, we've got some greens, and we've got some blues, and I think they all work quite well together. Now, in terms of how crazy you want to to go with the fire prism that's really up to you there's some incredible reference images on google images or on pinterest where you can see a lot of detail and attention has been put into the fire prism itself i decided to keep it pretty simple at first a sort of crystalline finish was all i was looking for but you can get really really intense with it adding some sort of lightning streaks or prism like light reflections and refractions within the actual crystal itself but i kept it pretty simple due to the scale and the time limitations i had on me to make this video and all I've done here is made a dark to light gradient point on the prism itself, and that would suffice for me. And as you can see, I'm just using the side of my brush and the tip of my brush to drag the lighter paint 
In a smaller surface area, the brighter we go, as we always tend to do with these paint jobs. The brighter something is, the less you generally want of it on the model, to emphasize the point at which you're trying to get bright in the first place. Once I was happy with the smoothness of the gradient and the contrast between the darker and light blues, I moved on to the edge highlighting, which is pretty simple. Obviously just use the 45 degree angle edge technique on the side of your brush to do the edge highlighting. And then I just created a few additional lines to imply the crystalline nature of the fire prism at the tip. Now I'm using a Da Vinci size zero brush to do this entire paint job pretty much. So if you want to get these fine points, I highly recommend a size zero brush to do these kind of scale models. I then moved on to base coat the soul gems on the graph tank. We're going to be using a very dark green because these soul crystals have a lot of contrast from dark to light. So we're going to get the dark toned down first. Now you can do these soul gems in a purple, a blue, yellow, whatever you want, but I decided to just go with green. Now we're doing a little bit of edge highlighting on some of the black areas that we painted earlier. We're going to be using Mechanica Standard Grey and then moving into a lighter grey, literally light grey by Vallejo. And we're trying to keep these contrasting areas as extreme as possible due to the scale. Obviously you can do less or more of this depending on how you see fit. Now, if you really want to bump up the contrast, white is a key trick here for that. The more white you add to something, obviously, the brighter it becomes. And white is a very useful tool at this scale to start bumping up contrast in very short distances as much as possible. Now, you don't need to do all these techniques that I'm doing here in terms of extreme contrast changes between, say, blacks to whites and greens to yellows and reds to oranges. But this is a nice intermediate level to show you how far you could go with a model at this scale. Now, obviously you could do much more or you could do much less, but you can pick and choose which techniques you see fit for your model. Now, there are a multitude of ways of doing these soul gems, but the rule of thumb that I like to follow is keep one top corner dark and the bottom opposite corner bright. So we're going to have a dark top left corner in all of these soul gems. And then the bottom right corner is where the greens start getting lighter and lighter. The only exception is the fact that the flare or flash white dot paint is added to the darkest area in the top left corner to create that gem like quality of the soul gem. Now we're kind of in the ugly phase right now when it comes to the soul gems and the cockpit windows, but we'll improve the transitions later on. Right now we're just trying to get the proportions correct between all the different green tones that we're using. Obviously the lighter we're going, the less surface area we want to cover as always. And that's what I'm trying to do here. The warp stone green is the mid-tone and then we're going to be using the mute green very, very sparingly. And then even a little bit of Uriel yellow, even more sparingly, and then finishing off with a white dot in the top opposite corner in the darkest area of the soul gems and the windshield. But it must be said that the windshield actually gets a white streak rather than a white dot because it's supposed to be a cockpit rather than a gem. And then I just go back in with flat red to improve any areas that I've painted over by accident with green. And once I'm happy with how it's looking, I use a little bit of Euro yellow just to really bump up the contrast a tiny little bit more, as you can see here. We're using a very small amount of this Euro yellow just on the smallest edges of the soul gems and the cockpit windows. And once I'm done, I'll now move on to the white flares that go on the soul gems. Any mistakes that were made were fixed off camera, but there wasn't too many mistakes and they were fixed with flat red and transparent red accordingly. Now we're moving on to the highlighting of the model when it comes to the red body panel work. We're going to be using Wild Rider Red. We're just going to do a simple edge highlight to start with. If you don't know what that means, it's just basically catching all the edges of the model, whether it be panel lines or high contour areas. And we're going to be painting them with a Wild Rider Red. Then once we're happy with that, we're going to be doing a combination 50-50 mix of Euro Yellow and Wild Rider Red just to improve and bump up the contrast in very, very acute areas of the model, such as corners and very sharp edges. Now, I wouldn't edge highlight absolutely everything. I think it can start to look a little bit unrealistic if you do that. So just pick areas that you think could do with some edge highlighting and also make sure that if you are going to do the edge highlighting, try and focus it in on the corners less so on the edges as a whole, because if you've got a sort of a fat, flat bar of paint across an edge, it can look quite unrealistic. But if you draw that edge highlight to the corners instead, that can make it look a little bit more realistic. 
Once I was happy with the edge highlighting of the Wild Rider Red, I added a little bit of that Euro Yellow I mentioned earlier, just to some of the corners and extreme areas where I wanted to highlight a contour or a corner a little bit more emphatically. Now for me, normally yellow can be quite tricky because it's such a transparent color, but actually it's very useful when it comes to doing these very soft highlights. That transparency works really well when it comes to doing glazing and layering. Now what's happened is, of course, this yellow has really punched up the contrast of the model. So in order to alleviate that extreme level of contrast with the yellow, I'm adding a few more areas where the Wild Rider Red would be appropriate, just to sort of bring things down a little bit in terms of the extreme contrast. Now a model like this that really lends itself to edge highlighting is very easy to fall into the trap of edge highlighting everything to the most extreme. But I'm just trying to find areas that it feels appropriate and paint accordingly. Don't go overboard, less is more, and you can always add more if it's feeling a little bit flat in places. And don't forget, if you want to add contrast, it doesn't necessarily need to be with bright colors, but you can go back in with your dark browns as well. Now the jet exhausts were done with metallic paint, but you could always do a non-metallic metal technique if you prefer. For example, using the blacks and grays and whites like I was using earlier for the black parts of the edge highlighting earlier. But out of simplicity, I decided to just use a very simple one layer technique of metallic silver, which is what you're seeing here. Now, if this was a full size model, I would have done some additional edge highlights into the undercarriage, but because of the scale and you're not going to see it, I didn't bother in this instance. There's going to be a lot of these little fire prism ships on the battlefield and the undercarriages are not going to be seen. So it's not too much of a concern for me. I decided to keep the basing quite organic and natural because these are the Eldar, which are basically space elves to me. So we kept it with a rather natural finish. So we're going to be using grasses and flocks instead of anything too science fiction based. But before we put the flocks and the grasses down, we're going to be adding a rocky undergrowth, which is what we're doing here. Having grass seeming to grow on top of rocks just feels like an additional layer of realism rather than just having static grass or flock over a painted base, which is kind of an old school technique, but it just doesn't look as realistic as I think something like this will. Now you can use PVA glue or wood glue, but super glue really does do the job solidly. And that's why we're doing that. Now we're actually going to be using some base color cork brown from Vallejo here, which is a great color to just uniform all the rocks. And it's quite a nice earthy tone too. And once we add the Agrax Earthshade wash, it'll really pull everything together quite nicely. Now you can use an oil wash here, but that can take quite a long time to dry. So I'm using the more expensive option, which is my Agrax Earthshade, but it gets the job done perfectly. As you can see, I'm just being quite liberal with the application of the Agrax Earthshade and making sure it sits in all the crevices and contours perfectly. Once it's dried, I then go in with an Oshbati Bone Highlight with a dry brush, just skating the surface of the rocks, making sure that this lighter paint is catching the highest surface areas of the rocks just to imply another dimension of depth to the paint job. Now, this is kind of an additional couple of steps that you really don't have to do, but because we're going to be going in with grasses and flocks, I wanted the rocks to feel a little bit more organic. So I added a Athonian camo shade, which is supposed to imply there's surface algae and surface moss on the rocks with this slight green tinge. We're also going to be using Seraphim Sepia just to add another brown tone that's going to cut through. It's going to be very, very subtle, but just adding these additional brown tones just only solidifies the organic nature of what I'm trying to pull off here. Now, if you have one, I do recommend using a static grass applicator, but because these are such small areas that I'm working with, I haven't warranted needing to buy one yet. But obviously a static grass applicator will make sure the grass is standing upright for a more realistic finish. But for the instance of what I'm trying to achieve here, just compressing the static grass down will be fine for now. But in future, I'm sure I will invest in a static grass applicator for a more realistic finish. The only other mistake I feel I've made is I've put too many different grasses next to each other and probably should have done a better job of blending the grasses in the areas that I've applied them. Now, the good thing about wood glue, of course, is it dries clear. So all these white areas where the glue currently is sitting will disappear and you'll only see the flock and the rocks left behind, which would be great. Now, of course, you could go even more overboard and start adding pigment powders and things like that. But I didn't feel it was too necessary in this instance due to how many varied flocks I was using. 
And once that was finished, I just did the regular Steel Legion drab, painted around the rim, added the stem to the flying base, and drilled an appropriate sized hole in the undercarriage of the grav tank, and we have a finished model. As you can see, the basing works quite well. I would probably center the hole better, but I can always do that in future builds. But here is the finished Fire Prism grav tank. Thank you so much for watching another episode. My apologies to the delay on these videos. I always think they're going to be shorter than they actually turn out to be to record and edit, but I hope you're enjoying the content. Nonetheless, plenty more to come as always, but until next time, I've been Vincent signing off from here at Bunker 6. Join our Discord.